Hello everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls. And today we're gonna be talking about something that I get questioned about quite a bit. And that is, how do I know, when I'm meditating, if it's my angels or my spirit guides or some creepy thing? Well, we're gonna talk about that right now. So let's begin with creepy things. Creepy things feel like creepy things, okay? So if you get sick to your stomach, oh, that's a big one. That's a big one if you have, uh, it's thought if you have lower frequency energies coming around you that you will, uh, like we're talking, yeah, we're talking ghosts, people. We're talking ghosts, all right? But some people talk about smelling a sulfur smell, uh, feeling a headache, feeling nauseous, just feeling creepy and like your adrenaline is pumping, that's not an angel. That Well, that's not an angel you want to be working with, okay? <laughs> move away, move away. If you do experience something that doesn't feel right, okay, to the point that I just described, you can always say, Archangel Michael, help. You can also do other things depending on your belief system, but many people will command the light. This is how it is spoken of, right? So we are going to command the light. Um, I often, when I feel what I will call an entity that's coming near, and we'll get into that a little bit more, because we all are susceptible to these energies if you're open and sensitive. Well, everyone is susceptible to them and they're not even aware of it. But if I feel an entity coming near and it doesn't feel right, I will say, in the name of God's purest love and light, leave. And sometimes, I, as crazy as this may sound, I almost feel like the entity is laughing. And I say, I command you in the name of God's love and light to leave. And that will usually take care of it. What more often happens than not when people are first starting and they're trying to get in touch with their guides and angels is that they will open into the fourth dimension. Now, the fourth dimension, that's a whole other video, but <laughs> there are a lot of different energies in that realm. And most recently, in the past few years, I would dare say, the third, our dimension here, the physical, or in physical bodies, right, physical dimension, has collapsed in with the fourth dimension. So this is where people are feeling like there's something strange that just happened. What was that? I just felt a coldness go by me or what have you. So we are experiencing a couple of highways, <laughs> if you want to see it this way, uh, coming together. So when people are opening up, obviously spirituality has become very popular given all of the changes that we're going through. And so people, I think, are interested in knowing what's beyond the physical. And when they begin with meditation and they're unlocking that part and they're just going into what is first accessible, you're in with every kind of energy that you can imagine. That's why it's really imperative to make sure that when you're meditating, especially if you're gonna try something like astral travel, never astral travel when you are in a low frequency. You will energy match with a low frequency and then you're going to see hell, okay, basically. Um, but if you're in the higher love light frequency, then you'll experience a completely different astral realm, all right? But again, that's a whole other video. So people will often hear these entities, right? Or again, another video, hearing voices, but <laughs> another time, but people will hear these messages coming through and they will sometimes come to me and say, I meditated and I felt my guide, or sometimes they would say, my angel came in and told me that that person at work is talking about me behind my back and trying to get me fired. Can you give me more on that? No, you know why? Angels are not petty, nor are your spirit guides petty. <laughs> That's an interloping soul, okay? That is, who knows what that soul's intentions are, but it is believed that beings that have come out of a physical body and do reside in the fourth dimension, if they need energy to survive, they will try to get a charge out of someone. Again, getting into this idea of hauntings and such, getting an electrical charge out of someone's fear uh, or torment, right? So 
maybe this entity was coming in to speak to that person because they're lonely. This happens, okay? Maybe the entity is lonely. If you found this video and you think this is crazy, don't judge. Sit with it. I would venture to guess that you've had an experience and you don't even know it. Maybe you need to hear this, okay? <laughs> but, you know, it could have also been an entity trying to, you know, kind of get this human being, this being in a physical body to match frequency with them uh, so they can have a, a direct line to their energy. It could be so many different things. What also happens sometimes is that people start meditating and they want to go into a higher realm and they do and then they come across, <laughs> I've historically called her Aunt Betty Boo Boo. Uh, she's just a generic <laughs> soul. I don't know, it's just good for an example, right? Because we don't need to make things too personal unless you really have an Aunt Betty Boo Boo. Comment down below. Um, but Aunt Betty Boo Boo, she, she bakes blueberry pies, we said. I, again, it's totally dumb and we made it up, but it's fine for our purposes here. So sometimes you have Aunt Betty Boo Boo coming in and she says, you need to get married, right? <laughs> because she never sort of reset on the other side. And I always tell people, be careful of thinking, and I know this hurts some people and I'm not trying to hurt people, but be careful about thinking of your departed loved ones as your spirit guides. They are not your spirit guides. They can be around but they don't know much more on the other side just yet than they did when they were here. So you're gonna get the same kind of advice from Aunt Betty Boo Boo that over on the other side as when she would give you here, right? So the only thing that they know that we don't know is what happens when you die. And it's my understanding that a lot of those souls don't even have a memory of that sometimes. So we think that that is the ultimate question. It is most people's biggest fear. And so we think that we kind of put them on a pedestal. We think they know everything and they don't. <laughs> Your spirit guides are, it depends. And there are lots of different ways of looking at this. And a lot of people have uh, interpretations of this. But the way it's come through me at this point in time uh, is that our spirit guides, most of them were human at one point, And they are higher level, higher vibrational, fourth dimensional beings, maybe coming into the fifth dimension. All right. And then guardian angels are said to vibrate on the fifth dimensional level, which is on the same level as your higher self. Okay. Now, again, this gets really complicated because another message that has come through that we have sort of like a personal oversoul that has different soul expressions. And that's part of a, an even bigger oversoul where we are all one. I know it gets kind of convoluted and all over the place. It's fine. We're good. <laughs> but, you know, so thinking of your spirit guides as being a higher level, fourth dimensional beings, someone might say, well, what are you talking about? My higher self is higher than my spirit guides. Your spirit guides still have their oversoul and the whole thing going on. See what I'm saying? Like we're trying to like figure out the mysteries of the universe. Let's not, okay? Let's just do what we need to do here and get on with it, <laughs> right? <laughs> but what I'm getting at here is that often, well, first of all, they're saying even now to tell you is that the spirit guides need to be a little bit closer to you in third dimension because you're more likely to understand them. So when you're meditating and you're raising your frequency, your spirit guides are a little bit closer to you, okay? Guardian angels resonating on the level of your higher self can feed information through your higher self. I get asked all the time, why don't angels just show up? Because you would wet yourself. Oh, you think you're so brave. I would run out the door and I'm into angels. If one just showed up in my <laughs> living room, what's that movie, Dogma? With the fire extinguisher, like spraying, I think it's supposed to be Archangel Osriel. I think I've made that reference before. But yeah, like we would not handle it well, okay? We would not handle it well at all. And we would still, our fear would take over and we would still misinterpret whatever they are trying to tell us. So it's sort of in a way safer, if you want to see it that way, for them to kind of go through our higher self and then we can understand it. Or if you're getting into 5D, we hear people say that stuff all the time. You're already at that frequency and you have direct communication with your guardian angels, okay? It's like they're coming in and talking so there's a lot to this there's a lot of different uh ways here but let's say you are deeply 3d you're just beginning on your spiritual journey and you're trying to raise your frequency well you're probably going to hit up on your spirit guides first okay that's 
that's what they're there for. They're there to kind of help you uh, get comfortable with the process and just discovering that there is something beyond you. You have an energetic field, understanding your aura, understanding your electrical system, which is the chakra system, helping you get familiar with all of that. From there, and this doesn't mean that you're a better person or you're more evolved. If anybody says, I am more spiritually advanced than you, right there, they're not, okay? No, no spiritually advanced person would ever say that to you, okay? So just remember that. But as you go through your spiritual practice and you start to release more uh, ego stuff and you start to, this is what we talked about, ascension, right? You start to get more comfortable, more acclimated to a fifth dimensional nature and you're in touch with your higher self, you're still gonna have, your, your spirit guides can be right there with you, but now you're talking to your guardian angels. Now, if you can't get quite beyond that fourth dimension, are you not getting angel messages? You are. Again, it's coming through your higher self. You see, it just kind of depends on where you are. This is why we get number frequency, number combos. If you haven't checked out my, it's from years ago, but it's a good little video, quick, short and sweet, <laughs> like the whole thing. But uh, go check out my angel signs, repeating numbers video here on this channel. Uh, you know, that explains kind of some of the number combos. But, you know, that's what our brains work and we will pay attention to that. And if we understand what they're trying to tell us through those numbers, you know, we'll get the message. Or, you know, you hear Sandalfin is really great at uh, giving you a message through songs. A big thing with Archangel Sandalfin, in my mind, is the parroting. Like, I cannot even tell you how many times I've been talking to somebody and I say a phrase and then it's said on television, the exact same phrase. That's something to stop and pay attention to, okay? And that will start happening for you as well. Synchronicities, being in the flow. Now, when we start talking about archangels, they are thought to be seventh dimensional beings for the most part. I don't think there's like a complete rule about anything, right? So other people are going to be getting other information through. And then, of course, there are light beings that are resonating on um, every frequency level, okay? So you could be having some light beings that are your guides. Maybe they're in the sixth dimension. But when we talk about archangels and they are bringing messages to us, it really does depend on where you are as far as elevating in your frequency. Uh, but don't worry about that too much. Remember, your job is to be human. Your job is to understand the 3D realm. If you're trying to escape this, then you're trying to escape your soul's contract and you're not really serving anybody, <laughs> right? So it doesn't make you a better human if you can hear archangels. It's cool. Archangels can communicate. Again, they have their way of kind of funneling down and getting the message to us. A long time ago, uh, I got the message that essentially... An archangel will offer a, a piece of their energy, right? As much as we can handle and just enough to get the message through. And that's all we need. And another red flag when it comes to any spiritual practitioner or maybe just somebody who is interested in spirituality and you might want to back away is when they are claiming, no, Archangel Gabriel comes in his full glory and blah, blah, blah. For what? What are you doing? You ain't, no, you're not. The don't. Come on. You don't need that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Are you Enoch and you're about to become Metatron? Send some photo evidence. I don't know. But <laughs> there's no need for that. Or you have people claiming to work with seraphim and, you know, other choirs of angels. And that's all well and good if that's an interest of theirs and they want to frequency match so they can work with that realm. But usually people who, if they have the ability to do that, they're not talking about it. I'm telling you. It's the bragging that is a red flag, okay? So just be careful with that. So again, if you are starting out and, or even if you're not just starting out, if you're, you know, you're elevating your frequency and you're like, well, I just had this being come forward, ask who they are. And let's say you're meditating and it's Archangel Gabriel. And you sit with your feeling and you're like, yeah, but I kind of feel a little off about it. You can question, are you Archangel Gabriel of God's purest love and light? Or if you're not comfortable with that, um, for whatever earthly reason, somebody beat it into your head that God is bad. Um, 
of love and light, you know, whatever your deal is, do your thing, okay? It doesn't really matter. <laughs> like we're all doing the same thing, just calling it something different. Uh, so ask that, are you a being of love and light? More often than not, there's a shut off and it immediately kind of clicks them out. If they do hang around a little bit, you can imagine that there's a shield around you and they can't get to you, all right? They can't put any energy into you. And then if it is an archangel, and more often than not, this is what happens to me if I have something come around I'm like, is that Archangel Gabriel? Yes. Like I don't even get it out yet. <laughs> yes. Okay. The Archangel Gabriel of God's prayers. Like, yes. You know, kind of thing. So it will be, ve they're very succinct. Like they're very, they don't have egos. So that's what is very bothersome to me sometimes when people say, oh, you have to do X, Y, and Z or this archangel won't work with you. They don't care, okay? They don't need you to make an offering to them. They don't have egos, okay? They don't have egos, you can just talk to them. Now, if you as a physical being, you feel like you need to put all the physical things together to open you up, to, to focus your intention, that's a different thing. Then by all means, go ahead and do it. But when people are telling you that they're somehow more powerful because they go through all this stuff and they turn around three times, clap their hands and all that stuff, and now, oh, the, you know, the holy, holy, holy is coming down. I, for what? <laughs> At the end of the day, you're human like the rest of us. That's the, that's the gig, okay? That's the thing we signed up for. What are we all getting all fancy about? Listen, there's a time and place for things. And sometimes I really do think that people trying to just go beyond the beyond is for the sake of the beyond, just to seem like they're more elevated or more advanced than anybody else. But that's just my opinion and who am I, right? So you will know the difference if, just to recap here, if you're meditating and a being comes to you, get the info. Who is this? Are you of love and light? And if they are, they'll stay. If they're not, they go. And if you feel like there is an, because uh, an entity will stick to your fear or it will stick to your trauma. I have to say this, I am not a psychologist. I am not qualified to diagnose. Everything I say here is not meant to be a diagnosis or a replacement for therapy. Thank you and good night, okay? Leave me alone, okay? <laughs> but, but I will say, you know, when I have seen people come along and maybe they are suffering from some sort of mental disorder, okay? Especially like schizoaffective, or, you know, any of those, any of that realm. Uh, they, at least the clients that have come to me that have had that, um, they're sort of bottomed out. There's no anchor. And so that's just how I perceive it. And so all of this stuff, it's like, it's like having, uh, like being a flower with roots and drawing up toxins. Okay. That's how I'm kind of seeing it. And so in a way, but they, they are the strongest people because they are alive and they are still processing and processing. Maybe they have a different perception than everybody else, but they're still kicking and they're still taking it all this toxicity and able to process it. It's amazing to me. But those are the people who would be more susceptible to having some sort of, um, you know, it, again, just generically calling it an entity that's not necessarily of pure, uh, pure light or purity. Uh, come to them and they believing that it is an angel. This is where we get into the, again, maybe this is a whole other video, where people think that mediums are crazy <laughs> um, or that having an awareness of something beyond us is crazy or having crystals around, I guess crazy. I'll wear it like a badge of honor, I suppose. I don't know. I've got all kinds of things around. <laughs> like, what do you want? But it's not exactly the same thing. So if you are somebody who is in a low frequency, if you are suffering from mental illness, take extra care to check, to check where you are, to ask, and to always be invoking Archangel Michael's protection. Not out of paranoia, okay? No, 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 no. We don't want to put you in that place. But just to know that you are loved and you are safe and you are protected as you explore what is beyond the physical, okay? Now, for other people... If you're still kind of like, well, I don't know. Again, it's the feeling. When an angel comes to you, you will feel peace. You will feel calm. You will feel love. It's just this immense, beautiful love. And you can still check it, you know, and say, who is this? You'll get a very succinct answer and you'll start to get your messages. Now, you might hear them. You might feel them. 
you might get a vision, you know, it comes through a lot of different ways. But if you're meditating, as I said before, and you get this kind of creepy feeling coming to you, or you're starting to get these messages that make you feel bad about yourself, or I'm not going to go too far down. Like angels are not going to tell you to do anything bad. They're not going to tell you to interfere with someone's free will. They're not going to tell you how special you are. Okay. It's, <laughs> let me break that one down. Cause some people be like, Oh, Archangel Michael came and told me I'm the force of this earth and blah. You made that up. Okay. You have something going on there where you feel like you need to be in control because maybe you're not in control of things. Work on that. Okay. Go, go take care of that. Um, that's not how they work. They don't do that. If you are in a low place and you're, you're in low self-esteem, they'll come in and remind you how much you are loved. They will come in and encourage you and say, you are good at music. I don't know. I just made that up. Um, you're good at music. Give yourself a chance. You know, we'll help you kind of thing. Um, but they won't often come in and say, you are a genius meant to take over the earth with your music. Again, leave. That's that's some freaky stuff right there. Nope. Get get thee to a priest. Okay, <laughs> that's an exorcism. I don't know what's going on there, but nah. Okay. So again, pay attention. Angels are not going to tell you anything bad. Light beings are not going to tell you to do anything bad. Your spirit guides are not going to tell you to do anything bad. Pay attention to how you feel and use that little test to figure it out. Now, leave your questions down below because this can go on and on and on and on. If I need to make a part two, I will happily do that. So if you like this content, please make sure that you give it a thumbs up. That helps me out tremendously. And subscribing and sharing, that's awesome too. Thank you all so much. I'm sending you so much love and take care. I really wanted to get it right. Trying to find some balance in my life. I never really put up a fight. And now I'm losing sleep. When an angel comes to you, get out of here.